slightly unpromising start to the walk. Drizzle, the crack of distant shotguns. A rather, I don't know, not an enticing footpath, is it? It's uh, Saturday the 24th of October. It's a Saturday afternoon. It's about, I don't know, it must be about half past two. Why have I come out down to Purfley in the Thames Estuary at this time of day in this kind of gloomy weather? Well, it feels like the perfect day to come down here. It's a landscape of pylons and cranes on the train out from West Ham. And I really felt drawn out to the river, the murky reaches of the river, the industrial Thames, the marshlands. It's the kind of day when you can imagine Dracula coming ashore to go to his uh, Carfax Abbey. This is where I want to be today, particularly in the drizzle and the rain. Where do I go now? Look, <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with. Go up that ladder there to get a view over the wall across the river. So I think we have to walk along this path here beside this brightly decorated uh, sea wall, this flood defence wall here, towards the Queen Elizabeth II bridge. The sound of the gunfire over there at the firing range is on Dartford Marshes, or is it Erith Marshes, or that marshland between Erith and Dartford. I walked around there in my book, This Other London. That was uh, 2012, summer 2012. Quite a lovely day as I remember it. But this is what I came down here for today. This kind of landscape is so dramatic. We're just right on the edge of Greater London here, right on the very edge. landscape we're heading towards. These containers, I guess they're chemicals or it could be petrol or oil. And the Queen Elizabeth II bridge down there. I haven't actually walked on this side of the estuary between Perthfleet and Tilbury before. I've walked either side on this bank, on the north bank, and I've walked on the other side there from Erith down to, to Dartford, but first time along this little section here. It's very dramatic. Very, very windy as well. <laughs> I don't know what was here before. To look that up when I get home. There we have Dartford Power Station on the other side of the river, right on the edge of the Dartford salt marshes. The Thames is still a working river. ship there. We'll have to look it up on the on the shipping service. You can look up ships and, and then you can track their movements. We have a large cargo ship up ahead and you can look up the ships online just by putting their name in and you can track their movements then. There's a, I suppose it uses the GPS from the ship and at any given time you can see where this boat will go next after it leaves here at Perfleet. I did that when I did the walk for my book I went on to uh, Erith Pier and I spoke to some sailors there that were moored up on a ship that was taking soil from the diggings of the super sewer and it was dumping them out in the Thames Estuary. So all the dirt was being dumped out. It's a big, uh, there's a big ditch in the Thames Estuary. And I would look them up from time to time to see where they went after, after they left the Thames. And we could do that with the, with the Yasmin here. So you can 
just make out the words Esso up there. I think Esso is uh, originally Anglo-American oil and petroleum, isn't it? Later became the Esso. All the cargo here in its containers, waiting to be loaded onto the Yasmin. A lot of this work now is done by robots. And you think about how many people used to work in the docks loading all this stuff on. Now very few people involved. It looks like we're going to go right round beneath where they load the freight. Look, this is where the trucks go up to load up the ship. And we go down through here. these sounds, the kind of the boom of the trucks on the bridge here, the clanking of the metal, the real continuous clanking sound. I know I keep using the word dramatic, but it really is, isn't it? This is not the scenic part of the, of the Thames path. Up and over this little bridge here, give us a view of the Queen Elizabeth II bridge. Really quite windy now. And you can see all the traffic backed up on the Queen Elizabeth II bridge. It's kind of famous for its traffic tailbacks. It's the continuation of the M25. There's also uh, two tunnels, I think, which run under the river here. It was a really big deal when this opened. I think it was 1990, 1991. It was a massive event. Here we have a, a little river about to make its confluence with the Thames. And we're finally getting down close to the water's edge here. Or really the mud's edge in reality. I guess the, uh, the tide is out at the moment. bit of sandy beach. Some people have set up swings beneath this jetty here. Just people will find beauty everywhere. It's a great bit of architecture there isn't it? I think it's a ventilation shaft to one of the tunnels. inspiring isn't it? What a massive structure. When you think about the, uh, the celebrated bridges of London, you need to think about the celebrated bridges of the world. Look at the San Francisco, the Golden Gate, Gate, Gate Bridge and the, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. We don't even mention the Dartford Crossing unless it's to talk about traffic congestion. <laughs> but this is really a kind of quite an impressive, magnificent structure isn't it? when you see all these kind of silos here of aggregates and chemicals and petroleum and oil it makes you think that Perfleet was once where the uh, the Royal powder magazine gunpowder magazine was kept and I suppose one of the reasons would have been hey, I suppose it was needed to load up the uh, the Navy the fleet but also to keep it away from the city in case it blew up likewise we push these sort of noxious industries down the river Everything blows east. All the toxic smells and the toxic chemicals, we push them down the river out of sight. And that continues into the 21st century. It's also interesting to think when you look at the sky and you look at the landscape, that Turner, the great JMW Turner, came down to Purfleet to paint down by the Thames.
that stone nest lighthouse down there. Looks like we can walk on the other side of the wall. Let's take a risk. There's some great graffiti here. Slight jeopardy of uh, walking on this side of the wall here. You see the river behind me is that you can't get back over it after you know after you've walked away along. It's happened to me twice before. Once down at Dagenham, down at Dagenham Dock, and then the other time when I walked out to the uh, the new container port down there, just beyond Stamford the Hope. And in that case, I'd walked too far to turn back and so I had to kind of clamber over the wall into the uh, into the container terminal and I wandered around locked inside there for about an hour. Okay, we've got a pillbox here. It was built between 1940 and 1941. Rain's really, really lashing down again now. I have to tuck my camera up in my jacket for a little bit. But it's, a, it's almost the perfect weather to compliment a walk along this part of the Thames. I remember the first time I came down to Tilbury for an episode of the radio show I used to do. It was a not dissimilar weather to this. Another pillbox. Just saw a couple of fellas doing some graffiti. You can barely see the other side of the Thames, it's so misty. It's uh, so easy to get distracted by the amazing infrastructure here, the pylons and power lines and jetties and wharfs and bridges and silos and all of that, but you can overlook the riverside ecology. There's a really thriving ecology here and a natural life that's thriving, all the amazing bird life as well. Wow, this is the mega pylon, the mother pylon. This is like something from a dystopian sci-fi film. I think it's the Procter and Gamble site here, the chemical plant. Place of steampunk fantasy. Can you hear that sound? The experience of walking along here is really like stepping into a completely other world of these mega structures and these weird kind of industrial noises. This really is one of the most uncanny landscapes I think I've ever walked. It's right up there with the uh, active volcano in Sumatra I walked the top of with its sulphur vents and plumes of sulphurous gases coming from the ground. Gunan Sabayak, I think it was called. This is a, <laughs> this is a not dissimilar experience. set of metal steps to go over to get to the next bit of the path. Walking quite close to the edge of the sea wall now. Oh, <laughs> hear the winds. With this wind now, I really do feel like I'm on the top of a volcano in Sumatra. <laughs> Can you hear it rattling this metal fence? Very dramatic, I knew you didn't come out today. I'm so glad I did. A 
represents another boat. We can look up and uh, track its journeys onwards from here. Just coming up to the outskirts of Greys here. The noble Essex town of Greys. And down there we have Tilbury Docks. Heritage Wharf of Greys. So, I think we'll end this walk down by the river here at Greys, Essex. Walk up and get the, the train from here back into, back into London. <laughs> what an amazing walk it's been. I nearly didn't come out today and I'm, I'm so glad I did. We'll obviously keep the walk from his historic Tilbury Fort out to East Tilbury. We'll do that another day. And some of you will probably be thinking that was where I'd be heading today. But that deserves a decent chunk of time and it's basically five o'clock now. So we're gonna run out of daylight quite soon. But thanks as ever for coming with me on this magnificent walk from Perthley to Greys along the sacred River Thames. So as ever, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Mm -hmm.